Life is meaningful. You are real. This is quantum consciousness. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and write a review. Join me deep inside the mystery of numbers. Come and hop for metaphysical loop. Zero concepts become objects and then become quantia. Join us for an episode of quantum consciousness. Hey there, Justin Riddle here. Excited to be back uh, talking about quantum consciousness. I wanted to start this series by discussing a very simple model of consciousness that really made an impact on me and really is kind of how I think about consciousness broadly. And I think it has a lot of applications, but is fundamentally very simple. So the model is Roger Penrose's three world model. This is a trialist uh, viewpoint as opposed to dualist or monist. And today I'll be talking about the three worlds within this model and sort of what they mean, what they're about, and some of the questions that apply to each of these different worlds. And uh, sort of end on the interactions between these three different worlds and what that might mean. Alrighty. So I'm going to start off with the physical world. This is often considered mainstream science view on, on what the world is. It is physical. You may have heard of physicalist or physicalism. This is the notion that everything is physical and can be described physically. So you can look out in the universe, you can measure things, gather properties and data and information from the world, and that physical description of the world is metaphysically what reality is made of. It's made of physical bits, often conceptualized as little billiard balls bouncing into each other. And these are the atomic and subatomic particles that make up the universe. And everything can really be reduced to physicalism or physical bits and sort of understanding the properties of how these things bump into each other. And I think a lot of people that are drawn to physics, at least from a consciousness perspective, are really trying to get at the core of reality. And I see, at least when I taught uh, my course on consciousness or quantum consciousness, people that were physics uh, majors were very much um, enamored with this idea that there could be a, a physicalist description of everything. And that if we just understood the properties of how different things interact, um, we could then derive, you know, everything in the world. One of the core tenets of physicalism is this notion of complexity, complexity. And complexity is, you know, my skepticism uh, sort of pushes that it really is sort of a, a statement where you say, all right, we have some simple principles. We're going to take some, some simple physical things, combine them here, combine them there, and then just add a bunch of complexity. Insert, you know, an inordinate number of complex stages, and then voila, I can make anything happen. Right? So the idea is consciousness. Yeah, it's probably um, pretty hard to grapple with, pretty hard to understand. You think about your thoughts and your feelings. Well... I'm going to take some simple things, add complexity, and voila, I can make your thoughts. I can make your feelings, right? So critically, I would say it's sort of an appeal to um, a lack of understanding. In a way, it's like I'm saying you can't understand it. I can't understand it. No one can understand it. It's very complex. And then my solution comes out. So if I had one sort of critique against physicalism. It's mostly an appeal to complexity. Alrighty, on to the second world. So in the sort of dualistic models of consciousness, you have the physical world and the mental world. And the mental world is essentially your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, often referred to as qualia, Qualia is a subjective feeling or a subjective nature or aspect to 
an experience. And so qualia is sort of a physical, non-physical, and that subjective feeling cannot be reducible directly to physical stuff. So instead, we have qualitative experience and then sort of quantitative data, and we're trying to figure out, you know, how do we take these subjective experiences and map them onto the brain, neural activity, what have you. And so in a dualistic point of view, you acknowledge that the qualitative stuff is actually not physical and that there's some sort of interaction between the physical and the mental, but it's not necessarily the same thing, if that makes sense. All right, the third world. What is this third dimension or third world that has been added by Roger Penrose, for example? Um, Roger Penrose calls this the platonic world. And this is a reference to Plato's world of forms. And the notion here is that there is abstract concepts, mathematical understanding, and these concepts and mathematics and these rules exist outside of the mental, outside of the physical, but they're sort of purely mathematical and conceptual. So what does this mean? Let's take the simplest example, which is a square, right? We have a square, and guess what? You've never actually seen a square. You have seen very, you know, good approximations of a square, but you've never seen a perfect square because a perfect square is a concept, right? A perfect right angle, a super straight, perfectly flat line, um, no imperfections. This is a concept right? It doesn't exist physically. We can create physical approximations of squares, but they are not actually squares. There is the one true square, the one true mathematical description of a square, and this defies any physical representation, but we can all access it. We can all understand a square. Um, another example is the whole numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Humans are able to really easily and at a young age understand the whole numbers. The whole numbers are a universal concept, but they don't really exist in a physical sense. And also, another important property of, the, of that third world is that it is transpersonal or beyond any individual. These concepts seem to exist in a platonic form or they exist beyond any one person, right? We can all access a concept, um, but we don't own the concept, right? No one owns a square. You know, you own a feeling or an experience in that mental world, but you don't own the concept of a square. We can try to claim intellectual property on this and this and that, um, but these concepts are fundamentally universal in that we can all access them, experience them, see them, understand them, but they're not really physical. Um, and Plato was a, a three-worldist. Plato believed in this three-world description, and there's a number of, of people throughout the years who have been proponents of a three-world description of, of the self or of metaphysics. So to summarize the three-world model, there's physical stuff, there's subjective, personal, emotional feelings and qualia in this mental world, and then there is this transpersonal beyond any individual world and this is the platonic world the world of, of understanding and forms and mathematics all right so what are some fundamental questions that we can ask about the physical the mental and the platonic so we'll start with the physical a physical question where am i in my biology am i in my brain 
Am I in neurons? Am I a sequence of neurons? Am I, you know, where am I in my body? How much does my body influence me? And how much am I in control over my body? Um, a mental world question. What are thoughts and feelings? Why do I feel a sense of ownership over my thoughts and feelings? What is that qualia, that qualitative nature of thoughts and feelings? Another mental world question. Um, why do I wake up every morning and I'm the same person, right? I go to bed, I wake up, I go to bed, I wake up. There's a, a narrative, a continuity to my experience. What is that narrative of myself, of my life? Why do I have an I, a me, an I, a me? There is a sense of, of being Justin for me. I feel that I am Justin. I have a sense of self. Um, where does that come from? What does that mean? All right. Platonic questions. What is human understanding? How do we do science? How do we come up with theories, test a theory, verify a theory, get evidence for a theory, and we agree on theories, right? Where does this shared understanding come from? How do humans communicate meaningfully, right? I'm throwing words at you, but you hear those words and you interpret them and you understand conceptually what I'm talking about, right? So I can say the word unicorn, right? And you have an image of a horse with a, with a horn on it and the unicorn is in your mind. I have conveyed a concept across space from my mind into your mind. And yeah, there's probably details of the unicorn that are different. But the unicorn doesn't exist physically. There's no physical out there unicorn. Um, but we have a concept for it. We understand it. There is this universality to this understanding. And how sort of metaphysically can you have anything universal from like a purely physical description of we've got a bunch of matter and planets and, and solar systems. How do you have a concept of a square in this universe? How, yeah, how do you make that out of physical stuff, right? So Roger Penrose proposes that there are really three different worlds. There's physical things, not denying the physical universe. There's mental things. There's your consciousness, your experience. And then there's math and there's common understanding and none of these are really reducible to one another. You know, physics is a series of laws that governs physical material. But a physical particle is not the law of gravity, right? The force or the law of gravity is beyond any given particle. You know, these laws and these forces are really non-physical in that they seem to be these governing principles, right? So those are some of these introductory questions for thinking about the three world model. And in the next video, I will be talking about how quantum mechanics mysteriously and non-coincidentally, in my opinion, has sort of three core principles which line up with these three worlds. Measurement in the physical world, superposition in the mental world, and entanglement in the platonic world. So more on that in our next video. Alrighty, talk to you again soon.